What's going on today, everybody? Hope you're having an awesome day. I know that I am. Well, we're back here working on the Subaru. I went and did the uh, quick release on the car, and now I'm having lots of problems with the steering angle. So while I was putting it on, I didn't like how the tolerances were, so I went and hammered the actual adapter, the hub adapter, onto the, the steering column to help seat it a little bit better. Hammered on there, and after that, I am having problems. The other thing I also did is I was trying to take the airbag, the actual cables, out so I didn't have to actually have the cables tucked in behind the adapter. While doing that, I pulled pretty much everything apart and the ribbon cables were all, all came out and ever since then, I've had problems. I've got my hill assist light on, my... Uh, D, C, C, D, center diff stuff is flashing at me, the lock, um, and it has the bars, the stages, and then the lock, that's flashing at me, as well as the traction control. So we're having problems all over the place. Let's go ahead and see if we can fix it. I went and bought myself a nice new tool, so we can actually look further into the engine than an actual code reader or the access port can do. So let's get to it. So this is what my dash looks like. I've got my hail assist light on, and then the center diff stuff is blinking at me, as well as the traction control is off. Now my tire pressure has always been off because I have aftermarket wheels, brake, and seatbelt stuff. So I can't go and switch my traction control. I can't do anything with that. I don't have hill assist, and I also cannot switch anything down here i can change my mode that works still if i change my mode but i can't change the diff settings on anything and all this is due to a little sensor that sits back here so we'll go ahead and turn the car off turn the car off we've already gone ahead and taken our steering wheel off and our hub adapter is off now we're going to go ahead and remove our actual adapter and get to part of get to back of the problem i guess now that that's all off we can see i tried to take this wire off of here and i thought if i go ahead and i remove these clips on the inside there's four of them that i'd pop this out and there'd be a connector on the back since there isn't really a connector on this side well, I was very, very wrong. So I popped this out, and then all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of ribbon that came out. I'll probably show you guys it, but there's a whole bunch of ribbon that popped out with it, and it made it a giant mess to try to put it back together. Put it back together, and did the, there's an actual reset instructions on what you do, and what you do is you take this, and you go all the way to the right, don't be hard on it, but it should stop. Well, you get tension, and then you go back your quarter turn to go up, and then you do three full revolutions. One, two, three. Now that should recenter the steering wheel, and now you can reapply it to, or re-put on your hub adapter stuff to the steering wheel. I thought that was the problem, and it actually isn't. It's actually the next piece behind that. So, we're gonna go ahead and take a Phillips and there is a screw down here that we have to undo. We'll undo this screw and get this beauty pieces, these beauty pieces off of here and get to taking the rest of this column apart. Now that we got that one screw out of the bottom, we can actually just go ahead and pull on this and it will pop down and comes right out. Now, there's three screws. There's one that you have to kind of get down in here that's behind your key. One right there, then, then there's two on the other side. One about the same spot on the other side, and then one a little bit further back. So to help with it, if we go ahead and take our steering wheel, pull it all the way out, and put it all the way up, we can get to those a lot easier. And one of them's right in here. Now, with those three screws out, we can go ahead and actually remove this top piece, and we have to actually push the column back down to pull it out. 
We don't even need to pull it out. We just need to get to these two screws. So now we can get to the screws we need to to take these two apart. So the piece we're looking for is actually right behind here, connected to it. You can't really see. You'll see once these come out that there's two separate pieces right here. This is your steering wheel and then your angle sensor is kind of right behind it. So we need to get to that sensor to see what's going on with it. So here I've got a graph showing our steering angle sensor and it's reading zero. And we can see that it's got a zero up there and it should be reading a number. So if we go ahead and we turn like we're going to turn our steering wheel, we should be getting different values for what this is actually doing. So they're not connected somehow. So there's our starting of our problem. So we're going to finish taking this out to make sure that everything in here is nice and connected still. So here we go, here's our two modules. Here's our first um, connector. This is for all your connections going to your buttons. And then this is your actual steering angle. So steering angle has two grooves in it, one on the top, one on the bottom. They go into the grooves on here. Make sure not to spin them, because it will offset what they actually are. So we're gonna go ahead, and if we look in this little, little window right here, we can see a triangle and then if we scoot it a little bit more you can see there's a notch on that tooth right there so that says that it's lined up so those are lined up and if i go ahead and i move this this is like turning the steering wheel we have our angle sensor is not doing anything so we've got a communications problem with this module to the computer. It's not wanting to see that this module for some reason. Well this is what the inside of the steering angle sensor looks like with the actual cap. Off of it it's just got little pressure clips going all the way around it and then we can see that we've got a couple rings, a sensor, wires, and a motherboard back in there. We're still having problems with the graph and if we turn this it's still not showing up with a value. I wasn't able to figure it out. I don't know what's going on with it. I keep getting a reading of zero so that's telling me that the sensor is stuck. Something is tripped to where it's saying the sensor is not reading anything because usually you'll get like a degree or a number um, that pops up and you got to set that back to zero. So my problem is, is my um, angle sensor, or my steering angle sensor, is showing up as not showing anything. So it's grounding itself out somewhere. Very interesting. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it. I've been tinkering with it for a while. Um, it's weird because I had it started like when I first got the scanner, I put it on, and it worked just fine. Like, I could see my angle. I didn't change anything, and now all of a sudden, I'm at zero, and it won't get off of zero. It's very strange. So, I'm going to go ahead and actually get another steering angle sensor for this, put that in. But for right now, we'll go ahead and we'll put everything back together. You saw the internals, and you kind of just you put the cap back on it and I'll show you how to line everything up to put the steering wheel actually back on the vehicle. So you got our steering angle sensor lined up kind of where it needs to go and then we're going to look in this little window right here and see if we can see our lines. Line our arrow up with our line and then make sure that our end here has the big end on the bottom. And before I even put it on there, I'm going to do my 
my three rotations and make sure that everything's lined up. So there's my three and a quarter. Do my three, my quarter. One, two, three. Now these two should be close enough to where they're going to want to mate together. So we'll go ahead, put these two together. Make sure that we line up both pins and get everything nice and lined up. Now the two are locked together in the right position. So they work together with what we have. And now we're gonna go ahead and line up our pins to get ready to screw it on. Now we'll get our screws, screw this back in here. Well, everything's all back together and it's not fixed. But we did find out that we messed the sensor up somehow. One way or another, it's not reading what it's supposed to. It's just constant zero. So it's grounding itself out somewhere. Less than ideal, but at least we have the answer we're looking for. I thought we could realign our SAS or our steering system, recenter it, and uh, be done. So I bought that scan tool to make sure that I can recenter it, but my sensor is not reading right. So I can't calibrate my sensor if my sensor won't have an output. It is what it is. At least we know and no one's half the battle. So now we gotta go get a sensor and put a new sensor in this uh, car. If you're going to do a steering wheel, don't tap on it with a hammer. Don't go messing around with the airbags uh, wiring. Don't try to take stuff apart. Don't be spinning it while the steering wheel's off because it looks fun and it looks cool. I found that out the hard way. It's a very expensive part to put back in the car. So hopefully I can find a car that's parting out and I can get, grab it off of there. Either way, we now have the tool to mate the new system or the new sensor to the system again so we will see how that goes i'm gonna get out of here hopefully i can find something somewhere on the internet to actually fix this and get it dialed in so i can have my brake system and my hill assist and all that other stuff working again because it's winter's coming up and you want your traction control to work in the winter anyways i'm gonna get out of here i've been rambling on too much you enjoy the rest of your day I'm going to go to work to find some more parts for this thing. Uh, take it easy, everyone. Peace. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. You guys are killing it. Peace.